Welcome to The Countdown, the show that counts down the five coolest things happening in space right now. Coming up in this episode, a Jupiter collision, a magnetic superstar, and ping pong ball satellites. But first, five. If you subscribe to the Space Lab channel, you probably saw the live stream last week where we learned the result of the two winning experiments in the Space Lab competition. Space Lab asked kids from all over the world to submit their science experiments and the winning entries would be sent to the International Space Station. From thousands of entries, two finalists made it to the ISS. One of them, Egypt's Amr Mohammed, looked at the feeding behavior of the jumping spider Salticus Senecus in zero gravity. Amr wanted to find out if his spiders could pull off their usual technique of catching flies. The spider scopes out the fly with its large eyes and then pounces on them. So did Amr's spiders, Nefertiti and Cleopatra, retain their hunting skills in space? Astronaut Sunita Williams streamed back a report. My gosh, I saw her stalking a fruit fly, unbeknownst to that poor little fruit fly, and she was looking at it and she was going real close and all of a sudden she jumped right on her, so it was amazing. The other experiment, from Dorothy Chen and Sarah Ma of Troy, Michigan, looked at whether bacteria would become more deadly in space. No need to fear for the astronauts, however, because this bacteria infects fungus, not people. The results? They were definitely different ones, had different colors, so you're going to see some interesting results when you get these back. Unfortunately, Dorothy and Sarah won't know the results until the bacteria are safely back on the ground. Note to future scientists with short attention spans, you usually get faster results from spiders than from bacteria. Four. Scientists have discovered a giant magnetic star with about 35 times the mass of the sun. The star, called the NGC 162042, catchy name, lies about 20,000 light years from planet Earth and is in the constellation Perseus. The star has a magnetic field 20,000 times stronger than the sun, which makes it the most magnetic of all massive stars, at least the ones we found. It's so huge and the magnetic field so powerful, it takes around 160 Earth days to rotate on its axis, while the sun takes just 25. Scientists say that this star could help explain the role of magnetism in the evolution of stars and galaxies. Three. Hey, did you see the giant fireball exploding on Jupiter? Well, on Monday, September 10th, Wisconsin resident Dan Peterson did. Dan, a backyard astronomer, was looking at Jupiter through his telescope and saw a bright burst coming out of its side. It only lasted for a couple of seconds, and he quickly reported the sighting online. Another amateur astronomer confirmed Dan's sighting and posted some video of the fireball he happened to capture. Astronomers still aren't sure what caused the explosion, but chances are it was a comet. In 1994, the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet broke into 20 pieces and crashed on Jupiter's surface, creating some interplanetary fireworks. Two. If you could send anything to the edge of space, what would it be? An experiment? A wedding ring? Maybe a marshmallow? These are just some of the things people have sent into space as part of the PongSat program. PongSat is run by JP Aerospace, a crowd-funded do-it-yourself space program. Through the program, students can send mini-experiments up into space as long as they fit inside a ping-pong ball. On September 29th, JP Aerospace will release seven weather balloons, carrying 1,600 PongSats to the upper atmosphere. Here, the PongSats will experience a near vacuum, cosmic rays, incredibly cold temperatures, and zero Gs on the way back down. According to JP Aerospace President John Powell, people cram all kinds of things into the ping pong balls, from plant seeds to full-on upper atmosphere laboratories. In 2009, Toshiba flew a chair on one of the PongSat weather balloons. What would you send up in a ping pong ball? Let us know in the comments below. One. If you haven't noticed, it's election season, which means the presidential candidates are getting all kinds of questions, including questions about space policy. My colleagues over at Scientific American, in coordination with the website sciencedebate.org, put 14 hard questions to Barack Obama and Mitt Romney. These questions covered all kinds of sciencey topics, from biosecurity to climate change. Both candidates stated the importance of a space program, Romney calling it crucial to technological innovation, the global economy, national security, and America's international standing. Obama states, he is committed to pursuing an ambitious new direction for NASA that lays the groundwork for a sustainable program of exploration and innovation. 
Obama's statement focuses on current NASA successes, like the Curiosity rover and the International Space Station. He wants manned space missions, with humans visiting an asteroid by 2025 and Mars by 2030. And he mentions the Orion Deep Space Crew Vehicle, which will take a test flight in 2014 and go where no spacecraft designed for humans has gone before. Romney's statement is less specific about missions, but he states, A strong and successful NASA does not require more funding. It needs clearer priorities. I will ensure that NASA has practical and sustainable missions. There will be a balance of pragmatic and top priority science with inspirational and groundbreaking exploration programs. Whichever candidate you like, at least both appear to be interested in space exploration and a healthy U.S. space program. You can find links to the rest of the candidates' responses below. And that's your countdown. For all of these stories and more, visit scientificamerican.com slash the countdown. The link's in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Space Lab channel or watch another video. For Scientific American, I'm Sophie Bushwick, shooting through space at 30,000 meters per second.